I wanted to make a video about how I do my coaching sessions and how someone gets to a point where they can have real conversations. So in this subsequent uh, anonymous coaching session, you'll see the role play that I have with my client. I tell him to talk to me as if uh, he's interacting with me. And then I we reverse roles and I talk to him as if I was him in the same position. This particular client, very ambitious, still in college. Since we started, got a girlfriend, but he still wants to meet people and be a charismatic guy. So props to him for like pushing himself and getting even better. But he still wanted to know how to have real conversations. So in this clip, uh, notice how I coach him through some of the principles and the tactics on how to have real conversations. And hopefully what you'll get from it is um, for yourself is how to use these to have real conversations as well with the people that you meet. Let's role play. Just show me where you're at. So let's say I'm a cool guy. Cold approaching is not necessary in college. Let's say we're, you went to some club that you, we had both interest in and it was we, we met and we had a good time and now it's like afterwards people are just hanging out and talking. I think that's, that's a lot more realistic for you. Hey, thanks for coming so, out, man. Yeah, what'd you think about the session? Dude, absolutely awesome. Um, it's super cool to see people who have uh, similar interests. Yeah, totally. Um, what brought you here today? Like, why did you decide to come out? It's first time. I've so I've, I've been wanting to uh, get into photography for a while, but uh -huh. like I've never fully um, dedicated my time. <laughs> so um, this this is going to allow me to really learn it from the ground up and um, truly know the things that I have sort of been acting like I know, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, how about yourself? Oh, I've been doing photography for many years and um, I never thought I was good enough. So I just wanted to see like how people were and just kind of see where I'm at. I've always been, I'm doing, doing stuff on my own for so long. And then when I got here today, I got to see like some pretty good talent, but also I realized like I'm not bad. I was doubting myself for a while, but now I'm like, oh, I'm pretty good. I'm not bad. Very cool. That's, that's awesome that you can find that uh, yeah. reassurance while still, you know, um, understanding that there's Ruby Row. That's uh, that's cool. Yeah, thanks. Exactly. So uh, do you, where, where do you usually uh, shoot around here? Um, I have my studio. I do a lot of like nature still shots. So like up in the valley and the hills, um, I'm still looking, uh, I'm looking for some spots. So yeah, those are usually where I shoot. Very cool. That's awesome. Um, I'm looking for places to shoot as well. Um, you know, like I mentioned, I'm pretty new to LA. So a lot of the, uh, areas around here, I'm still <laughs> seeing for the first time. Um, would be really cool to find some people who also, you know, want to explore new places to shoot and to go out and uh, shoot with them. Yeah, sure. Um, uh, yeah, okay. I, I, I'll text you some spots. I can text you. I'm usually like, I've been going alone, to be honest. I don't know what it feels like to go with someone else, but I can text you the, the locations. And then next time I go, if I'm feeling like it, I'll send you a text and maybe come out. Um, uh, yeah, I'd be down for that. It's a little off out of my comfort zone, but I'm okay with that. Cool. Okay. That sounds good. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, yeah, give me a number. I'll text you. Yeah, 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 for sure. All right, cut. Okay. So, yeah, so, so for starters, too, role plays is a little difficult for me, and it's always, probably, it's always different than uh, the actual conversation, but it does give you an idea. Um, well, it puts yeah. the pressure. You, you're you're doing it with me as a coach, so it puts the pressure on you. So if you're if you if you, that's good because if you can do well here when you go out, the pressure won't be as fierce. It won't rattle you as much. Okay, cool. We'll keep that in mind um, when we're you know role playing, of course. All right, that sounds good. It's that's, also been, dude. It's been so long since I've had the the same kind of just uh, social momentum as like earlier this year that. Uh, I don't know. I feel out of it. I don't like the feeling of, uh, you know, being socially stagnant. And sometimes I feel like uh, it's easy to fall into that when you have a girlfriend. But, you know. Remember that conversation we had about being hot on yourself and that conversation with the relationship you have with yourself? Uh, yes. Yeah, yes, I, think, I, think, I think you're being a little too hard on yourself, man. All right. Yeah, you're doing fine. You're doing great. 
you 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 are working pretty hard. You have a girlfriend now, which is awesome. Who you like? Who you was hot? You've done a lot, dude. So give yourself. Um, be okay with feeling proud about that and not feeling like there's always something missing. Okay, cool. That's yeah. That's I'm gonna write that down. <clears throat> you ever play like I'm old school, like Rockman or Mega Man, whatever? You ever play those video games where it's like upgrades? So think yeah, of it as yeah. a video game. It's Long like time. each. Okay, when you play a video game, you're upgrading stuff. You're not you're not missing anything. So in your mind, you're missing something you have to fill. No, I just think of it as like upgrades. Like upgrades, like nice to have, so they're not necessary for my. Right. Life. Yeah, you're right. you're thinking the way you talk about it. It's like um, I'm missing something or something is wrong, and I need to fix it. Mm-hmm. And that when you have that metaphor, like the ship is sinking, you're always plugging holes, right? Right. So your metaphor for life is like has is really important. And the way you talk to yourself about it is really important. All right, let's roll. No, let's role play back that photography situation. I'm gonna reverse roles, okay? And I mean, I don't even know what I'm gonna say, but let's see how it goes. So reverse, reverse roles is in like um, let's say we went to a photography meetup of some kind, and we're both students or something. And then let's say you're at UCLA, and I'm 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 you. And we're having yeah, that okay. same conversation after the meeting. Hey, uh, thanks for hosting the, the the session. It was really cool to see everyone out here. Um, yeah, man. Totally <laughs> glad you got uh, you got the opportunity to come out today. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I I'm relatively new to LA. I mean, I've been here for a while. I've been working, but I just started taking up photography. And to be honest, I'm new, so it's good to see like all the different types of talent. I, I didn't even realize people our age did this kind of stuff or had enough money to buy cameras, you know? And so to see everyone out here with that, that, that was pretty cool. Oh, um, absolutely, dude. Yeah. yeah. There's a, there's a very, very cool kind of underground photography community here in LA. Really? Um, what, what part are you living in? I am uh, in Culver city next to the Sony studio lot. Oh yeah. 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 No way. I, uh, I, uh, my best buddy lives in that area. So that's uh, that's real cool. Cool, man. Um, I'm sorry. I didn't catch your name uh, during the meeting. Uh, my name is Tony. Hey, Tony. I'm name? Giovanni. Nice to meet you. Giovanni. Nice to meet Giovanni, you. Giovanni, because I'm Asian, but I was born in Rome, so that's my Italian name. Oh, got it. Very yeah. cool. Wow, born in Rome. Yeah, you it's kind of a long story. Dude, it's a super long story. I don't want to bore you. My dad was a diplomat, and, you know, if you want, we can talk about it, but it's like, it's a, I've been around the world and back, and now I'm here. Yeah, you'll have to, you'll have to catch <laughs> me up sometime. Yeah, yeah, we can do that. Um, so, Tony, okay, cool. Thanks, man. Um, besides photography, uh, what what are some of the things you do? Are you going to school here at UCLA? Yeah, so I do go. I'm a I'm a junior at UCLA, so uh, I I'm studying communications here. Yeah. Um, I'm also interested in film as well. Um, but uh, photography takes up most of my time. Photography and videography um, is really what I enjoy. What do you enjoy so, about photography slash videography? Um, I love being behind the camera. That's my favorite part of it. Um, is really, you know, being able to, you know, make edits and tell stories um, that can connect with others online. You, you like being in front. Of, well, most people say they like being in front of a camera. You you said something true. You said I like being in the back of the camera. I like being behind the camera. Behind yes. the camera. That's rare in LA, no. Um. Yes and no. I guess you could say that's kind of subjective. Um, but I find that, you know, I really choke up in front of the camera, but I perform my best and do my best when I'm behind the camera. So um, I feel that my purpose has always been behind the camera as opposed to um, in front of it. Do you feel like that you're working when you're shooting or is it more like a fun thing for you where it's like you're not thinking about the money or anything else? Just it's, it's art for you. You know, I think uh, there's a quote once, and it's uh, the goal is not simply to work hard, play hard. The goal is to make our uh, work and play indistinguishable. So when I'm behind the camera, I definitely feel like my work and play are indistinguishable. You sound like that's that sounds like something a very ambitious person would say. Because <laughs> ah, I wish, I wish. <laughs> no, here's why: Thank because you. because most college students would be like, "Oh yeah, I work. You know, I have this job." And then when I'm hanging out, I'm smoking weed, and we're watching. You know, it's something very, very casual that to yeah, yeah, yeah. let off steam, right? But for you, it's like very serious. It sounds like, I mean, serious. Like, 
like it's very focused. Yeah, definitely. Um, definitely, definitely appreciate, you know, working towards something bigger. So that, uh, that's part of the reason I'm so into photography. Um, um, if you don't mind me asking, um, are there a lot of, uh, um, what's the right phrase? Are there a lot of, um, guys or girls in photography? Cause today in our session, I saw mostly guys. Is this like a mostly guy thing you think, or is it more women or does it depend on the day? Um, sort of depends on the day, to be honest, we get a pretty mixed group. Um, you're right. There were a lot of guys here today, but, um, you know, we do weekly meetups and things like that. And, uh, yeah, a lot of girls show up around. Here. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm just curious. Cause my, my girlfriend, <clears throat> Not s similar, but not exactly the same. And she's in Santa, um, she's in Orange County, so um, it'd be great to show her some of this stuff. I don't know; if she'd be interested, but it's nice to know. I feel like with film and photography, there's a lot of guys, especially like there's a lot of female talent on camera, but I feel like off cameras, it's a lot of men. So it's good to know. Yeah, absolutely. There's definitely you know when it comes to portraits and such, uh, I myself definitely find that I take pictures more of uh, female subjects as yeah. opposed to males. And, um, I don't know if that's true of the industry, but, uh, are it still doesn't make it any less enjoyable. Are you single? Tony? Uh, I am single. Yeah. Do you like girls, guys? No, no, no judgment either way. <laughs> girls. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. I might know a few. Yeah. Okay. Well, it depends what kind of girls you like, but okay. So, um, right. listen, I'm going to go. Thanks for your time. Thanks for hosting this today. Uh, I would love to like, since I'm new in town, if you ever, I know you're probably pretty busy, but if you ever have time, I'll have to take you out for tea and maybe we can talk some more about photography or some other stuff. I'm just trying to get to know people that might be interested in this town so that I can, I kind of want to like, my vision is to have like a good group of friends or social circle and uh, no pressure. Um, but let me give you my number. I mean, just I'll, I'll text you sometime or you can text me sometime. Cool. Sounds good. All right. Okay. Cut. All right. What'd you notice about that interaction? Uh, Fundamentally, I noticed that you're really, really, really good at um, asking questions and getting people talking. Like um, something that I'm not super great at yet, <laughs> you know, asking the right questions. Um, what else? It's good. Uh, very relaxed. You're very relaxed. Um, Everything was loose and comfortable for the most part, you know. Um, I've always had a problem with putting like a lot of pressure on things. So I feel like every, you know, I feel like um, what it's going to look like in person is going to be much more relaxed, you know, than I'm uh, <laughs> making it seem, you know, like much less of a, much less of an event, so to speak, than I'm making it out to be. I felt like you were really honest. <laughs> Like you were very like, you know, not as, not in a vulnerable way, but just very honest. Like this is who I am, you know. This is why I'm here, and this is what I'm doing, you know. So <clears throat> good, yeah. Off the top, yeah. Yeah, that's great. That's very observant of you. Um, there's so many layers to what I do, but also like, I'm not out all the time now, so sometimes I'll make mistakes. But the thing is, like my my um, techniques are enough to cover for my mistakes. Like there are a couple of times like, um, what should I talk about next? There was a little bit of awkwardness, yeah. but it, it's natural to have that. It's okay. So mm -hmm. I'll just, I will illustrate two for you because otherwise you won't remember. The first thing is that when I come into the interaction, I'm always coming in equal value to the guy. I noticed that in your interaction, you were more like, maybe I shouldn't be here. I got to prove myself. Like in your mind, you, there's this like idea of like, I have to prove that I'm good enough to be here. And that comes across in your yeah. voice and your micro expressions. Right. Okay. So it's like, you're saying it not to just say it. You're saying it to like, cause you're like, oh yeah, I'm here because I have this camera, this photography. And because of this, I'm good enough. So it's like, a, so like kind of like you can tell that. I can feel, I feel like I have to qualify. Yes. Bit. You feel like you, for some reason, you yourself, yourself is not good enough. And that therefore what you do will compensate for you as a person to be good enough. Right. 
Or maybe okay. you're just maybe you're just nervous, but for some reason you just feel like you have to say these things to hopefully get the other person to respond, right? Okay. There's a little yeah, bit of I, that. Yeah. You know, I I think you pegged that very correctly, to yeah. be honest with you. Um, yeah. How do you alleviate that? So uh, so when I came in, I was like, hey, what's up? Thank you. I when I say thank when I'm saying it, my my the inner energy field is Thanks for hosting. Like I'm genuinely showing my appreciation, but I'm not showing it to get something. I'm showing it because I genuinely feel that way. And when I tell them things, I'm not telling, I, I made this mistake in the past. Most guys were like, I, they're bragging in LA, especially in LA. Oh, I know this person. I did this and I'm pretty cool. So you should get to know me. It's too much. And then you have guys who are more anxious, right? Or who are more like, I hope you like me. I'm doing these things. I'm like, Hey, it's me. Oh, well, here's something that we could connect on. In other words, I assume we have equal value, but I'm giving him stuff so that I'm looking for that connection rather than proving value. You see, I'm not playing this game of value. Right. Okay. And yeah. Like LA is very lateral. It's very transactional, right? People are like, I know this person or that. So when you play the value game, the moment you, you negotiate value, you're now in the value game where it's superficial. I don't play this. Right. Game. So, so if you, right. I almost feel like, um, I picked that up from learning game in a way and it yeah. carried over into like yeah. all other interactions. Yeah, um, exactly. Same way with a hot chick, right? Eat value. And now it's like with a guy, like it's like, it's all about your value. We're all just by being human, you're equal. So that's, that's my assumption. <laughs> okay. It doesn't mean you won't run into people that are more superficial, especially in LA who are just like, who are you? Why should I talk to you? But when you run into that, you can, you can deal with their ways to deal with that. But in the beginning, I always assume equal value and notice how one of the other techniques is that when I talk about, uh, I'm from Rome and da da da, And I'm like, if you really want to know, I'll tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm socially aware enough not to just blab him off. Like, Oh, I came from all this stuff. I'm like, well, if you really want to know, I'll tell you, it's kind of a long story. So I feel like, sorry, go ahead. I don't, I don't mean to interrupt. Okay. what do you feel um, like? That's sort of an answer that I should take um, when it comes to like certain stuff um, when I work in like film on things like that because I find that like I don't like telling talking about my work um, or like oh Steph Curry was on the show or something like that because people of course get really like they make it a value thing you yeah know yeah I mean? you, you can be like, hey listen I, I I don't like everyone named Joss in LA but I, I'm lucky enough to work at a show where I see some pretty cool people I don't want to talk about that if you don't want to but if, if you're curious I'll, I'll I like seeing people happy to hear about things but I don't want to talk about it if, if you know we can talk about this right stuff. I always okay, give them cool. the option I give them the option to explore my my history my story but I don't make it a like a necessary thing yeah um because you know I have no ego about it. I'm an assistant. Like, you know, anybody can have that position if they wanted it, if they really, you know, all you have to do is <laughs> seek it out. Um, but a lot of people, especially back home in a different state, they're like, you know, they get really threatened for some reason, but I hear that. Dance to express, not to impress. My salsa, my late salsa teacher, um, uh, rest of soul, used to teach me. And the same thing in game, which is, I'm telling you these stories to show you the truth about who I am. And then showing these truths, I'm looking for connection points. I'm not looking for value. I'm looking for connection points. So when I tell you these, my frame is I'm giving you my truth and I hope that there's some commonality there. I'm not telling it in a way like I'm trying to impress you. I'm just telling it in a way it's like, this is how I express my story. This is how I'm just telling you because I like telling my story. It's like, I like telling people that I grew up with a diplomatic father. And because of that, I'm able to understand how lucky we have it here in the States. You know, I've been in third world countries. This is where right. I am. I'm not ashamed of it. I'm not like super proud of it either. This is just, you know, I'm, 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 I'm accept, I'm full acceptance of who I am. Am I true? Right. You're not, you're not, you're not concerned about how your truth is going to be received. Exactly. If anything, the only thing I'm concerned about is whether or not we can connect on the truth. So when I tell my story, it's, I hope you connect with me because I think you're an interesting person. Okay. Big difference here. Rather than I want to, I hope I get something from this. So I'm, I need this to make be a connection. I'm like, no, I hope I hope we make a connection because you, I have a feeling you might be cool, and I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. So from that standpoint, from an emperor standpoint, it's like, or a, a standpoint of like a prince, let's say, it's just like another high value person with a high value person. 
it doesn't mean that you have to have a lot of money or have the social status, so to speak. It just means that your mindset is that of someone who I know that I'm enough. Whether or not I achieve my future goals externally, I know that as a human being, I'm enough and that I carry myself in that way. Right. Okay. okay. A lot of the stuff I'm saying is quite like deep. So you might like not get it until like when you rewatch a video, you might get different layers of it, right? Because it's such a deep principle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tactically, let me give you some two or th two th before because otherwise, just uh, people get overwhelmed. So, um, tactically, um, the thing I did when that, you, you mentioned that I'm good at t asking questions is called eliciting values. So, there's two techniques. One is um, when they say I like film and photography and videography, and I said, "What is it about it that you like?" Right. Cause yeah. everyone says, I like hiking. I like doing this. Like, cool. What is it hiking about that like, you like? And some people will say like, I like hiking cause I, I get to exercise. Other people say I like hiking because of the views. Other people say I like hiking because I get to drink my latte and walk my dog. Other people say I like hiking cause my friends come with me. Every activity has a re people have a reason to why they like it. And you don't know the reason until you ask them. And why that's the question I feel like no one asks. Yeah. Yeah, it's called. Uh, so it's, what it's, about X? Do you like? Yeah, why do you like it? Why do you do it? What 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 is it about it that makes it exciting or this emotion for you? So you get into the listening value is obviously we take the surface level answer and we ask the the deeper questions. It's like what makes you feel about. It's hard to ask people what's your life goal when you go so deep, but when you find something superficial, then you're like, why do you do it? People are a lot more likely to give you their answers. Once I found out that you were super into and you, when you said my work and my pleasure are the same i'm like bro that's like in college you never hear that shit. so the fact that you said that i'm like man this guy's i'm obviously you're playing kind of part of you too as a as the character but i i noticed right away that if you, i would meet someone like this i would i would definitely um observe them as like someone who's very ambitious and yeah but at the same time you know i feel like people are kind of like i talk shop a lot you ever heard that Cool. You know what I mean? You talk about yeah. business work, okay. things like that, yeah. like quite a lot. Um, and I feel like that kind of like turns people off sometimes. You know what I mean? Because um, yeah, it does. Because because you're you're talking about it in a way where is that really what you want to talk about? You already said to me that you don't want to talk about it. Yeah, but I find <laughs> so myself talking, talking about it all because the time. because again because you think that there's value in that for the other person to try to impress them. See, yeah, and here's the thing: is the first person, the first thing that my I find that my dad, my dad's an attorney. The first thing that he asks anyone is, "What do you do?" Yeah, you're and not I your dad. That. You're not your dad. Yeah, yeah. because that's like uh, that's a very, it's a hierarchical question, like the way that he asks it, as opposed to like, "Who are you?" Not "What do you do?" "Who are you?" You know sure. what I mean? So, yeah, or like, "What do you like to do?" and and why do you do it? You know, like or. Like it could be, there are a lot of ways to phrase that question and the tonality by which you imitated your dad's, it's a tonality thing. Right? It's like, Hey, what do you do? Like, Hey, what do you do? <laughs> what do you do? Yeah, are, you, yeah. are you good enough for yeah, me? What do you do? Exactly. Like, so yeah, children do not imitate, they absorb. So, okay. You know. The other, um, more tactical stuff is from Chris Voss. I don't know. He's an FBI negotiator. So this is a tact I learned from him. So anyone, t someone says, I like hiking and then they, they pause or they stop talking. I'll just repeat the last few words. You like hiking. And then I'll pause for about three seconds. And like 90% of the time though, yeah, I like hiking because you know, when I'm hiking, I'm, you know, it reminds me of my mom when we used to go and when we were little, da, da, da. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Your mom? Yeah, my mom, you know, she passed away. Da, da, da. It's a FBI technique to get criminals to confess. Right. Um, I use it in my conversations when I, when the person is not very talkative or I, I want to get more from them, but I don't have the information. Just repeat. So Repeat the last few words and pause. The, the pause is the hardest thing to not say anything. I'll give you one more before we call it a day, which is um, cool. sometimes like conversations get awkward because, you know, you're just talking to strangers, right? So at some point I noticed that you didn't smile that much. At some point I was like, <laughs> it's like, yo, I'm trying to make a connection here. I'm like, yeah, you know, like, yeah, yeah. Whatever. Part, of, part of that is the pressure of like, <laughs> so like okay. yeah, yeah, <laughs> but yeah. I have, a, you know, I have noticed though, like even um, when I was out with you in UCLA, when I know that you don't, you don't just, I, your body is very tight. So you don't like mm -hmm. let loose, like, it's like, hey man, if it doesn't go out, it doesn't go out, but whatever. But you're like, it has to go out, right? So I, I yeah, that was a long time ago, but I, I, I can sense that maybe some of that's still there. So yeah, absolutely. Um. So you notice how in the middle of the conversation, I'll be like, if you're not giving me anything, I'm like, 
<laughs> like I'll just do this or like I just smile like yeah it's okay so in other words I'm accepting the fact that yeah it's okay it might be a little awkward because we don't know each other but like I have good intentions so for me I give a genuine smile but like yeah it's, it's all good and that right. that's the subtext of that it's just like yeah it's a little awkward whatever you know maybe it won't be new good friends but it's okay like I'm not harmful so I just give a full like full expression of what I'm feeling during that moment um, of course you don't want to do that when you're talking about like their like their mom passing away but um, right, right, but but just it's a show of intention. Yeah, it's a show it's, of it's, a show yeah. of like, hey, this is how I'm really feeling right now. Like, 